What's that, yo? So, <laughs> the shadow walk continues. It's been uh, a bit of a nightmare <laughs> since my birthday of being completely drained of the cards not willing to connect with me, um, not being able to connect with you, which has been making me feel a little bit crazy, but it's all part of this Pluto push that's going on since it went direct. Because when a planet goes direct, it's changing direction and so it stops and all of its energies expand out. <clears throat> now Pluto is in Capricorn um, at the moment and it's at 22 degrees. Now for me 22 and it's there for a long time because it moves very very slowly because it's got like a 248 year orbit. But 22 is the frequency of lower world demons. And as I've been saying for a long time, the, the, the energy of the demonic world has been closed off, but it leaves us with the thought processes of how to deal with those frequencies. And so it's about us digging deep. Now, on top of that, we've also got Neptune up to some gains you know neptune's about very very old energies from within our dna ancestry body work but body work has to be dealt with on an emotional level for us to fix things so we've got this sort of tidal wave of energy coming in from neptune and neptune's in pisces so it's very much like dreamy uh sort of very esoteric almost uncatchable frequencies that we can't seem to pull in and get an actual fix and a hold on but that's what we're being challenged to do so i've had to sit here today this is the first day that even the sun has come out i feel like i've been living in a shakespeare play <laughs> that every time i come out here to do something the 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 sun goes in immediately the wind picks up and it stops me from doing anything it feels like i'm being asked by pluto and neptune to just stop everything stop it all and just go inside yourself look pluto is one of the most important influential planets in our solar system it's death and rebirth and it will really really challenge us to deal with things that we don't want to look at. And it's really interesting that this year, Neptune, I've had to write this down because I know I'll get it wrong. Just like one the other day, I said uh, uh, North Node was in Aries. My North Node's in Aries, it's in Gemini. But sometimes when you're in the middle of readings, you can't pull up all the information. And I want this to be helpful. So I've taken notes. So Neptune, has been creating a harmonizing sextile with Jupiter and Pluto in Capricorn. So that's a good influence, but what it's doing is, while it's retrograding back, it's asking us to look backwards at very ancient energies within us, things that are from our DNA, ancestral DNA, that have been poked and made real in our lives that make us have a sense of dissatisfaction with ourselves and bringing them up and facing them and working out how to transmute them into positive energies that show us that moving on from darkness and integrating darkness and wearing your darkness is how your light shines brighter and that's a really difficult energy so it created this sextile on july the 22nd 7th which was the second day of this 13 galactic blue lunar storm year so the new year was the 26th of July and the day after this harmonious aspect came to drag up some shit. <laughs> and so now it's about to repeat that exact energy on the 11th of October. So because Pluto and Jupiter have moved direct, they're moving back to repeat that same frequency that we felt in July. So interesting, it's about taking down all your barriers not who you believe you are but who are you really underneath it and I keep saying that phrase and it's like Pluto has just smacked me around the face with it and said but who do you think you are so 
I've come out here today, there's no bells, there's no balls, there's no crystals around my neck, it's just you and me and some cards. Although I have bought a new deck and I've also been playing with these because it's the vice versa deck. It's asking me to show you this one so that you can see what happens. So the vice versa deck, here's the magician. And on the back is another aspect. So they want me to use these cards mixed in with the universal Celtic tarot, or that's the idea, um, so that you get a sense of what these planetary movements give us fixed energies and what energies are coming in that we need to look at. And then I've got the Afro-Brazilian deck to work as clarifiers to help us understand how we can switch these energies around. So <clears throat> we're gonna just begin by asking once again, what's Pluto up to? <laughs> Apart from knocking me for six and completely draining me of all energy. So can we please have an understanding now that Pluto, it, look, we're still under the influence of Pluto. It went stationary direct on the sort of fourth, fifth, but its energy frequency of expansiveness lasts for 10 days or more. So we're still in very dark waters. And with Pluto, you, it's the invisible frequencies. Pluto's almost invisible. It's a tiny little dwarf planet, and yet its influence is so massive. So it's asking us what frequencies do we have that we need to really look at and what are the frequencies that we just didn't imagine. See, I couldn't imagine the Plutonian Neptune traumas <laughs> that came out on my birthday. I, You know, they're things, and we all say it, I thought I dealt with them. And Pluto just went, mm, you haven't. You haven't dealt with them at all. So through outside influences it brings them into you so you know like an email or yesterday someone posted something that also reacted badly for me or <laughs> i reacted badly to it until i could understand and integrate those frequencies so it's an invisible planet but if you're open to work with it it will surprise you <laughs> so we've got four cards to begin with and let's not be pushy <laughs> Because that's another thing. You mustn't push. If you push at something, you will get nowhere. You've got to try and get with the flow. I've been pushing for days to get back into my readings, to push on with my personal readings. But the cosmos is saying to me, you have to fix this before the flow will return in a new frequency that will be of any help to anybody. So it's also, look, the wind's picking up. That must be one of my other most often used phrases. So, <clears throat> we have the hermit, and the hermit has fallen this side. So, the hermit has his inner light. But what do we need to do with this hermit energy? Because just down below this hermit, there's a cosmic egg. That's the Plutonian treasure. So let me explain. Pluto is like a very deep pond of still water. It's not like Neptune, which is the open seas with flow. This is like an almost dark, cold, <laughs> stagnant pond that we need to get in. And we need to swim right to the bottom. And very much like a salmon who learns to breathe salt water from fresh water and the reverse when it returns in its life cycle, we need to learn to go to the bottom of this and breathe the, <laughs> the dark, watery, uncomfortable emotions, I'm afraid. And I'm really, I'm still breathing them, but I'm going down to the bottom of these depths to look for my cosmic egg, my treasure that's hidden among all the skeletons that I've buried in my whole life. Not. I consciously thought I was burying the skeletons but Neptune's just said to me look at this lovely lake and I've gone over to the lake and I've gone oh yeah that's really beautiful even though I don't really like lakes they're a bit stagnant anyway still I'm not comfortable and then Pluto's just gone and pushed me straight, <laughs> straight in. 
pushed me really hard and I've gone right under the water and I'm still down there swimming around exhausted because I haven't yet learned to breathe all of those deep turmoils of emotions that I don't want to look at but I'm down there I'm looking for my treasure so that I can upgrade myself so what is the reverse of this card with this cosmic treasure taking your light and shining it outwards actually accepting it so the inner work and that's what tarot is all about wands cups and swords are inner work and then the pentacles are when you take that work back out into the world that you live in so it's interesting that the cosmic egg is down here the cosmic egg is still down here so there's something that's got to be unlocked he's shining outwards but he hasn't actually hatched his cosmic egg so let's ask what are the what are the clarifying energies to transform this what are the clarifying energies to transform this treasure at the bottom of the Pluto energy so it begins with the two of Pentacles this card for me is about stillness it's not the usual changing of cycles that is the result of the work but this card is about inner stillness look the drums the drums of life, the frequencies, the rhythms, the pulses of your entire molecules are still. You've got to go deep, deep inside, and you do it with an open humbleness to learn something about yourself. Your, your plates, your pentacles, your, your collection bowls for what's at the bottom of Pluto's deep icy cold dark waters you need to come to them calmly and gently because when you're prodded you're going to immediately fire into the old patterns and I do every time but then you go ah and then you find to set find a way to settle on them so part of that energy is how you approach plutonian work the next one we have is the nine of pentacles now ordinarily the nine of pentacles is the one card in the tarot deck that's talking about a strong independent female who uh, understands her value and worth but in this deck it's a far more complex image it's saying you've outgrown the version of you that you think you are it's who are you really that will allow you to reroot your tree of life it's like you've got to dig up the previous tree of life that you've been living by and you've got to reroot it not in a new pot because you've outgrown living in pots that's not the full you you need to root your tree of life now into the earth into the natural world you need to connect with the earth and then we have the three of swords you're looking for heartaches you're looking to see the things that hurt you the most difficult energy really difficult energy and slightly exhausting and look i'm someone who doesn't suffer from ascension symptoms i don't suffer from illnesses i don't really the only thing i ever had was a sense of depression but that was self-created in a way by allowing bad things that happened to me to blame myself for and to hate myself for and this is my moment where i am transferring all of those energy frequencies and changing how i look at them some things that happen to us happen to us so that we can learn but they also are not necessarily manifested by us some damage that's done to us when we're children is done through jealousy when we're younger people who don't appreciate the joy that you carry because they are already damaged so they want you to be damaged too and that's the problem with the old world and that's what we're seeking to change here because there's wonderful new energies that we're heading towards there's one that i'm really excited about but it's when saturn and jupiter move on the midwinter or midsummer in the southern hemisphere around the 20 19th to the 22nd 
of, uh, they move on the 19th and the 21st, I think. They're within two days of each other. They form a conjunction, which they do once every 20 years. Now for 200 years, those conjunctions have all been in earth signs, very difficult. And they're about to move for the first time in 200 years to create that conjunction in an air sign, in Aquarius, in that wonderful collective energy. And it's also the first time that they've moved within two days of each other to that conjunction so fast suddenly for 1589 years. So that's going back to 431 Common Era. And that was midway through the period of the fall of the Roman Empire. So we're at a point now where things are really going to change for good. So we have this three of swords and it has a red chalk line drawn around it but there's a hole in the chalk line and that's almost like a tiny little gap that you need to get in because somehow you need to pick up these sharp blades these things that feel like they're going to cut you and lift up the curtain and find what's behind it but you have to do you have to face these very difficult energies and, you know, I, I, a lot of what I do here is always about seeing the positive, and I am still seeing the positive, but you can't have positive results if you can't face your shadows. You will just keep running into the same frequencies, and you just have to sometimes take the bull by the horns, which is now making me think of our consciousness, which is in Taurus, <laughs> and plow through be brave enough to do this. It's inner work, so it's not that you need help from others. You have to do that work. That's what a shadow walk is. You walk with your own shadows and become friends with them. You learn to integrate them. And so then we have the seven of chalices. And it's just interesting in this card that this figure is now putting a flower next to those three blades because it's over it's integrated and that's how you turn around the frequency and turn your inner light to shining outwards next we have two fixed energies that will come after that frequency we have the knight of cups this is about racing forwards splendidly joyfully in new emotions this is he holds a new cup that's the treasure this that's his cosmic egg in his hands and galloping forwards with excitement i also want to say because knights for me are warrior cards but they're also very much a sense of teenage energy they're kind of when we learn something as teenagers we rush for particularly love we we often um when we're teenagers we rush out and our first romances mean the world to us but we end up hurting somebody because we don't fully understand those frequencies this is about a new kind of emotional language and emotions coming to you because we're going to get onto neptune as well in a minute but it's going to give you this sense of, of, of moving forwards into a new younger revived energetic frequency of love that you don't quite yet understand but you will but you've got to race forwards with it you've got to do that it's part of the journey towards these new frequencies and then we have the empress and this is always about movement forwards rebirth that sense of fertility um i really like this card because there's a world around her that's very beautiful that she stands in and she's standing in that plutonian uh pond in which you ponder dark things and she's now her skirt her inner emotional language this is all around the sacral is so expansive with self-love and self-understanding because she's integrated those plutonian traumas that everything is moving forwards again and then we have the nine of cups 
Now, this is the next challenge. This is a person who feels like they've achieved. And yet, the back of the card shows that he hasn't yet because he hasn't taken off with spirit to complete that manifestation, that wish card energy. And he's standing, he's got a smug look on his face, the bastard. <laughs> he's in his golden room, which is a sense of... Look, you find your inner warrior, you find your luminous warrior. We're talking about that here, shining your luminous warrior outwards, your sacral being healed somewhat. But then you can't sit smug in that frequency. You've got to do something with it. You've got to complete the manifestation energy. So let's ask, what are the clarifiers, please, for this Nine of Cups? What are the clarifiers, please, for this Nine of Cups? So, <clears throat> what's that? Oh, uh. right. So we have the chariot. This is a very interesting chariot image. Chariot is victory and movement, but it's almost like. It's almost like surviving war. <laughs> so, again, this is Pluto energy. You've got to survive a battle with Pluto if you want to move forwards. But that's a fixed energy. You know, if you twist this with this fixed energy of understanding that's part of the battle, you can transfer this to move to manifesting your wish rather than just sitting stuck in your wish waiting for it and it comes with the king of swords and this king of swords amazing because what he's doing is he's taken that curtain that he worked on he's picked up the sharp objects he's lifted the curtain and he's now he stands with his darkness as something he's proud of. He's almost saying, I'm ready now for the next thought battle, the next part of my journey. And he holds his hand out to say, bring it on, bring it on. I'm ready to shadow walk again. He's got his face covered because when he's ready, he will look, but he's waiting to receive that energy. What is that energy? nine of swords this is a really fascinating energy because the nine of swords is usually anxiety <clears throat> if you can take all of your fears as they come along each one and line them up and stop taking them and hitting them constantly on the anvil and trying to reform them in some kind of haphazard way but actually come to a zen of thoughts with them it's that thing that 22 degrees of capricorn that pluto's in changing your thought pattern demonic thoughts that's what we're having to all do at the moment so you need to line them up you need to almost get a journal tick them off each time one comes up see i'm on number two at the moment i don't know <laughs> i don't know if there's nine in total whether i've got seven more to do but do you know what bring it on bring it on because i'm moving forward into a new frequency and then we have the four of pentacles so going from this two of pentacles earlier to being given a sense of rewards this is like the I know they're two women, but they represent the kind of feminine flip side of Neptune and Pluto giving you the rewards for doing the work. So your gift that you want, your sacral self-love, you can have that if you deal with your negative thoughts. So now, let's move on 
to lovely old Neptune. I'm missing the sea so much and I think that's part of my challenge at the moment. Um, to not be able to go in the sea for the moment and it is driving me insane because I feel like I'm a fish out of water and that's causing additional stress on my whole body not being able to get into the water and download these frequencies but that's because that's what I've always done so my pattern has been to not face the thing but just give it to the sea and go I don't want that one and the sea takes it and absorbs it but now the sea is saying to me you have to be without me you have to step out of the neptune love and face the neptune fears which you know as a triton frequency i wasn't happy to do so neptune <laughs> i'm almost scared to shuffle them <laughs> neptune me old mate <laughs> I feel like we should connect with Oceanus as well at some point because Oceanus is the source of all these emotions. <laughs> Neptune. What's going on, man? What's going on, Neptune? Okay, a battle. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, Neptune? So we've got one mutable energy and one fixed. And now the sun's going in. <laughs> what's going on Ooh, i don't know <laughs> they're new cards it just looks pretty what's going on oh right we're beginning with this mutable changeable frequency from Neptune of the seven of wands this is getting back up and fighting on <clears throat> he holds the one wand and there are six at his feet it's interesting that there's a sense of uh, not quite but 10 2 and 5 there's a 17 frequency about this uh, card and 17 is interesting because it's a prime number um so it stands alone and it feels like i want to say that something you're dealing with is from like 17 generations ago well actually you know that could be true in a way that would take us to 200 years ago possibly ish you know so it will be interesting i'm feeling that popping around in me 17 17 as a frequency 17 generations ago and the energy from behind is stargazing looking into the cosmos and knowing that the battle is won i'm not sure if you can see that card very well because of where i'm sitting uh, the sun's over there obviously <laughs> slightly that way so that you can see it a bit better so we need to change this energy. So, how do we face this 17 energy? How do we face this battle from 17 generations back? How do we face it? How do we sort this through? So, we have three cards. Beginning with the ace of cups i'm fascinated by this because these are all urns and they make me think of people's ashes when they've been created uh, cremated not created <laughs> when they've been cremated and that frequency is about rebirth at the end of the day you know we're all so scared of death so often and actually death is such a beautiful frequency to step into. I'm not suggesting you do it, obviously right now, we're about living, but it's uh, partly because I'm a white self-existing world bridger under the 13 moon galactic calendar of this blue lunar storm year. It's also, I'm born in the year of blue lunar storm. So more than anything, I am meant to be the frequency of someone that can take down who they think they are and reveal who they really are even even though it's painful and it might hurt so this purifying of frequencies from 
very long ago, 17 generations back is what we're dealing with. So, and then it has the Knight of Chalices, defeating the demons, defeating this energy that was planted in the earth 17 generations back and being victorious. Look, he holds aloft the chalice, the chalice. He holds aloft his chalice, his urn of victory. He owns that frequency now. So it's go to the, it's again, sorry, I'm being just told, talk about this. It's water, it's Neptune, it's Pluto. You've got to go and look for this treasure, this cosmic egg. It's this treasure at the bottom of Pluto. Pluto and Neptune are working together to help you with this, but it's not an easy journey. It's a difficult journey. And then you get to the Three of Wands. And this is about a wonderful connection to the natural world is the solution. We, You know, look, those trees, that tree, get yourself them planted in the real world see that that is the portal that you're heading towards and again i want to say just be humble yeah all right i've shouted at pluto a few times i've not shouted at neptune though because i love neptune look i don't dislike pluto but it's such difficult energy that it, it does bring up a frustration in you so this battle why are you doing this battle to become a kind of spiritual warrior with magic and I really mean with magic this is the new frequencies that are coming in so the page of wands is about a new beginning and that's where you are look it's kind of look there he is standing there with his wand while still dealing with the battle that the cosmos is working on but when you've changed that frequency Suddenly, it's like you see the whole world differently because you're honoring the natural world. So, you also have another interesting fixed energy. So, think of your urns, your chalices that you've plucked from the bottom of the ocean. I know you dived in to Pluto's murky, freezing, cold, dark pond, lake. But somewhere down there, there's a tunnel that links through the fresh water of the lake into the salt water of Neptune to pull up that 17 generation ago ancestral trauma. And you converting that with your love of the trees into 10 of cups energy. Emotional fulfillment. And I want to say of loving another fully because the whole point of this might be that this 17 generation journey has been an inability to fully and truly love someone honestly and connectedly. That's the energy I'm feeling. So now we have, interestingly, we had this nine of pentacles, this outgrown energy that needed replanting. Now we have the nine of pentacles, but she's come showing her back, showing her dark side. She's not fully formed yet. So you can't have this frequency in truth until you've done this. It's the next thing on offer. The natural world, the Idrisil tree dripping emotions down on you, but you can't have it until you can transform this frequency of self-love. This card for me is self-love resonating in the real world, just like this one was. This is a nine and this one's a nine. So we need to turn this around. So I'm not showing you the other side yet. Just for fun, we'll have a little reveal on it in a minute. So what do we need to change this frequency? What do we need to change this frequency? Just two cards. P 
<laughs> so, ah, screaming the ending to really, it's, it's, it's the notion of the physical relief and that's crying. Um, I've cried a few times since my birthday and it's not something I do easily or often. Um, just doesn't happen. I tend to, I've always tended in my life to cry at happiness, not at sadness. So I've never been healing those secret, dark, Plutonian, Neptune sadnesses. So this is about absolutely screaming out, physically shaking the molecules to pull that pain out. Now, Sona, who's on here, she talked about some very interesting things from Armenian, um, uh, medicine from way back in her generations when you cry you must bless some water and replace it immediately because what you're doing is, is you're taking out the old distorted water and you need to replace it with something beautiful and fresh and clean and healing and also go and have a wee to get the rest of that trauma out so just something thank you Tona for letting us know about that because it's going to be really helpful in these energies so we're going from the completion and a new beginning, a clarity, a new beginning, the Ace of Swords is clarity, to the sun. Look, being grateful to the cosmos, being grateful to the frequency of the sun, which is the world we live in, this that makes trees grow, the natural world. We need to give thanks to the natural world. So when we give thanks to the natural world because we've screamed out and purified this frequency, we get this, which is us standing in that wonderful frequency with the sun lighting up all the joys around us in the world. So it's moving from the esoteric knowledge of the moon to the beauty of the daylight and the sun, energizing. Okay, so then, we have two more fixed energies. So we have the King of Cups. Now, this whole Neptunian dilemma, this battle, has been about cups, emotions, free flowing them, getting them to free flow again, picking up your cosmic egg treasure taking the lid off and letting all that self-love back out and that allows you to radiate self-love 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 and when you're a beacon for it you pull more love towards you and that will bring when you're connected to your Idrisil tree in a realm of magical love frequencies because you love yourself enough and you're stable this is what comes but you can't access that until you've worked it out. And it's coming with the King of Swords, which is another fixed energy. And this King of Swords is asking you, yet again, have you really done the work? Are you absolutely your thoughts? He's the Zen of thoughts. Have you established your thoughts? Because looking over the top of this water, of this uh, King is a water dragon. This is asking him to hold fixed because the emotions are able to be frozen in that the old thought, oh, big wind, big wind. I've had to grab all the cards, they're moving. This is important, that's why the winds come. You have to learn to control your thoughts. You have to learn to be able to wear them carry them with you but know that they no longer hurt you because you're flowing with the truth of your emotions and then <clears throat> i'm gonna slide the cards underneath this envelope because that wind's getting really aggressive it ends with bliss <laughs> four of wands this is about joyful happy beautiful you know, the, the card is often about happy relationships. And there is something about this card. There's Aries, dead. <laughs> That's war, the planet of war, Mars. Mars is in retrograde. 
So this is about dealing with those issues, dealing with those wounds. Because uh, Chiron, the wounds are in Aries at the moment. So this is about passing through those portals. This is a portal. And the natural world is bringing you through. But it's also um, that sense of joyful happiness and partnerships because this card often represents marriage but it's in a different way i don't want you to dream it in the wrong way because that's old thought patterns it's a new form of love when i talk about this mirror soul love it's actually a higher frequency connection with another because you're on a higher frequency they're on a higher frequency you can match it's not old school shit it's new okay and then the, the behind look on this is again about seeing the magic of life ahead of you seeing the beauty of the frequency of the new world because that's another of the visions i've had is when the frequency of the sunlight changes and it becomes a softer straw color it's not so intense that's also coming i don't know when because they don't give me dates at the bottom of prophetic visions so can we please what's the energies that we need to transform that what are the energies we need to transform that frequency there we go we have three cards <clears throat> wow they're interesting so it begins with the Knight of Pentacles. So this is a battle to find your place in the real world. So it's talking because there is a, a jousting lance and the dragon is fighting it. It's talking about how we have this need to reconnect with the world not in this aggressive way, not in this fighting, not in this battle, because we're always at the moment as a society, as a complete world, we're fighting the natural world and that's not what the natural world requires. So this is talking about stop doing the battles, because look, he's battling, he's got, his, he's got his bowl to collect life in and collect the emotions, but it's just going to keep tipping up while you keep distorting the frequencies. You have to work. This is that. This is that reminder of that king energy. Dealing with your thoughts in the real world. So taking your thoughts, working them through, calming them down, bringing a zenness to your thoughts, and then bringing those thoughts into the real world without a battle. And that's what the queen of pentacles who comes next shows you. This is to blossom and bloom in a protective, beautiful frequency. She is just dancing with the natural world. Her bowl is settled. It's on the table. It's ready to receive the gifts. It's ready for the manifestations of this to come towards it. And what does it end with? The magician filling the bowl. And this here is representative of your ancestor's original manifestation 17 generations ago, old as it was, because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there you go. Seven, one and seven is eight. He's putting his original manifestation wish that he never achieved or she never achieved into your bowl because you've got there by doing the shadow work so that's the readings now i want to say several things <laughs> one which is i i mustn't promise <laughs> things that i don't know that i can achieve because cosmic energies are working their own frequencies so my intention is to try and get done all of the animal sign readings by the new moon but i'm not promising because i am shadow walking and i need to observe what the cosmos intends me to do because I, I might sit down and they'll show me nothing so i'm not promising but that's the intention 
I'm also not promising that I can reply to every comment on here because also while I'm shadow walking, I need a lot more time to be disconnected and in my own frequencies so that I can learn things to help us all learn. And there was another part, but that's gone because obviously it was just a lie. <laughs> Because if you forget something, it wasn't that important, so you just let it go. But there was something else I wanted to say to you, but never mind. So, bear with me, I'm here with you, but I'm also at the moment here with myself to fix things so that I'm shinier. So, I'm going to go away and do all of this for me, and I hope that you can do all of that for you too. So, anyway, that's the reading on Pluto and Neptune. Wassail.